Welcome back at 718. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Prostate cancer is the number one cause of cancer in men. It's the number two cause of cancer-related deaths in men. Dr. Spencer Crane, a urologist with Toro, is here to discuss how early detection and early treatment, though, is key to battling this type of cancer. Doctor, good morning. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting us on today. Thank you. And, and let's first talk about uh, the, the signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. So one of the real problems about prostate cancer is it generally doesn't have any signs or symptoms until it becomes very advanced. And one of the things that we really stress is getting early detection for prostate cancer, because what we know is that by finding prostate cancer when it's small, we can still cure the disease. But once the prostate cancer has left the prostate, it is no longer curable uh, and requires much more um, intense treatment. What are or what is the way of, of detecting, um, especially in those, those important phases, the early phases, uh, detecting prostate cancer? So the mainstay for, treat, for diagnosis of prostate cancer is really a blood test called the PSA, which stands for prostate specific antigen. And this number can go up if you have um, benign prostate or normal prostate growth, but will be much higher if you have prostate cancer. And so that really drives our diagnostic uh, evaluation of patients who have prostate cancer. I know doctors are always urging uh, their patients to get their, is it an a annual screening? And if so, what at what age do you want those annual screenings to start? So most of the major organizations recommend starting about age 55 for prostate cancer. For men who have a higher risk of prostate cancer, so if you have a family history of prostate cancer, or if you're African American, we push those screenings down a little bit younger, either 50 or even 45 in some men. And let's talk treatment. I know that's always a, a really big thing. Early detection uh, through screenings, through that blood test you mentioned. But let's talk, let's talk treatment options. I know they, they're ever-evolving as, as years go on. It's really exciting to see the changes in prostate cancer treatment. Um, there used to be only removal of the prostate and radiation, and now we have a whole bunch of new ways of treating prostate cancer without removing the prostate and causing many of the complications that come with prostate cancer treatment, which for many men include erectile dysfunction and, and urinary incontinence, which can significantly alter their quality of life. Doc, we have a couple seconds left here. We have a website up on the screen, lcmchealth.org. Is that where you'd encourage people to go uh, for more resources? And, and, and talk about in person at the hospitals what people can find resource-wise uh, if they want to go that route. Uh, absolutely. The hospitals are a great place to go. Because prostate cancer is so common, it's worth speaking to friends and family members who have had either evaluations or diagnoses in the past because most of your great support will come from those people that know and love you. All right. Well, Dr. Crane, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you.